It has been three weeks now since I started using the i3 Tiling Window Manager as my daily desktop driver, and i3's been great. First couple of days after I switched to i3 were a struggle because i3 kind of functions a little differently than Tiling Window Managers I've, I'm used to, many uh, Tiling Window Managers I've used in the past. So there was an adjustment period, but three weeks in, I'm pretty comfortable with i3. Very comfortable, in fact. I haven't even considered in the last several days the fact that I'm running a window manager that I had never run before prior to three weeks ago. So i3's become very comfortable, and quite frankly, it's not a challenge. It's no longer challenging. So I'm ready to move on. I'm ready for a new challenge. And what I was thinking initially was once I was done with i3, I was going to move on to another tiling window manager. Uh, it wasn't going to be things I've used in the past, so I wasn't going to switch to Awesome, Qtile, or Xmonad. I've used all three of those before. I wanted a new challenge, something I'm not used to. So I considered BSPWM and WM. Those were the two that I had kind of decided on, and quite frankly, a few days ago, I'd, I had decided I was going to switch to Luft, but things changed. Over the past several months, I get a lot of people asking me about DWM. Hey man, when are you going to take a look at DWM on the channel? Uh, why don't you switch to DWM? Why don't you use all the suckless utilities? And I've gotten these questions dozens, maybe hundreds of times about DWM. And you know what? You guys are right. Uh, I've never taken a look at DWM on the channel. I've never used DWM. I've never installed the thing on any machine I've ever used. Don't know anything about DWM. BSPWM and Herbs LuftWM, while they would be new, I'm not sure if they would provide the kind of challenge that something like DWM would provide. So, you know what? I'm going to do it. Starting today, I'm going full suckless. I'm switching to DWM as my window manager. I'm going to go ahead and switch terminal emulators. I'm going to go ahead and use ST, the simple terminal. Gonna switch from using Rofi as a command launcher to D menu. D menu is great though. I, I love D menu. And you know what? Browsing the web, I'm gonna go ahead and use Surf. So let's discuss. So I spent three weeks with i3. Those three weeks were great. Uh, other than you know preference stuff, I prefer dynamic tiling window managers to manual tiling window managers, and i3 is a manual tiling window manager. Even though, for some reason in their documentation on their website, i3 refers to itself as a dynamic tiling window manager, it's really more of a manual tiler. And by manual, I mean there's no real pre-built layouts, so if I open a window, the next window, does it tile vertically or horizontally? Well, I decide, you know, I have to manually decide where that window is going to appear on the screen. And I'm used to dynamic tiling window managers like Qtile and Xmonad, where all this is determined, you know, in, in the layouts. So, anyway, i3 was pretty fantastic, though. I really love the key binding modes in i3. That's a feature I wish every tiling window manager had. I had two bugs, though, in i3. Uh, two, I, I won't say they're deal breakers. One was really minor, uh, and that's the number lock key on the keypad. For some reason... Whether that number lock key is turned on or off determines whether your key bindings work, if they use that keypad. <laughs> that is something I've never seen in any other tiling window manager, and it needs to be addressed. That's uh, it's kind of a minor gripe, uh, but the big gripe was VirtualBox. VirtualBox does not play well with i3, or i3 doesn't play well with VirtualBox. I'm not sure <laughs> which project is at fault there, but... I3 has this strange bug where if I take a VM in VirtualBox and make it full screen, say to record a full screen VM on one of my monitors and capture it in OBS, uh, it crashes. Uh, the screen, all I get is a, a background, the panels disappear in I3, the VM disappears, all I see is my wallpaper. And that monitor, I don't know what's going on with it, but I have to open up a terminal and kill the VM. So if I can't run my VirtualBox VMs full screen in i3, which is how I run them and how I capture them on camera, then I was always having to log out of i3 anyway and to, into a different window manager to record those VMs. So that, that's kind of a, a big deal breaker, actually, the i3 VirtualBox thing. For some reason, it just didn't play nice. But that was i3. Overall, my experience with i3, very positive. 
Let's move on to DWM. So, the home of DWM and all the suckless utilities is suckless.org, software that sucks less. We need to discuss the suckless philosophy. So, because they have a different kind of mindset for how they create their applications here. So, their philosophy, quote, it's about keeping things simple, minimal, and usable. We believe this should become the mainstream philosophy in the IT sector. Unfortunately, the, the tendency for complex, error-prone, and slow software seems to be prevalent in the present-day software industry. We intend to prove the opposite with our software projects. So, they are all about keeping things simple and minimal, and in their eyes, it's all about how few lines of code can we make these applications with. So. Things like DMenu, ST, DWM, they're all about keeping things extremely minimal. They don't have a lot of functionality built in to the program. You have to add a lot of extra fun functionality through patching these programs. And because of that, a lot of these programs are, are never going to see widespread adoption. There's a reason most people don't use ST, the simple terminal, rather than something like Xterm or URXVT or Termite. It's because of, you know, it's the ST out of the box, not that usable. You need to patch it a little bit. And then every time you patch it, you have to recompile it. <laughs> Same thing with patching DW, DWM and patching DMenu. But you probably... It's not that big of a deal patching something like DMenu or ST because you probably don't do that that often. But D DWM is a window manager, a tiling window manager. You're probably going to make changes to the config with DWM a lot. Adding, removing key bindings, you know, changing things, adding different functionality. I know when I, you know, I spend a lot of time <laughs> configuring things like Qtile and Xmonad and Awesome in the past. I can't, I've probably changed those config files hundreds, maybe thousands of times. If I have to constantly recompile every time I make a small minor change, I'm going to be honest, that's going to get annoying pretty quickly. Now, I know a lot of people, eh, it's just a couple of seconds to, you know, CD into the directory and then make and make install, you know, and compile it again. Well, yes, it's just a few seconds few seconds, hundreds of times, maybe thousands of times. Eh, you know what. But I, you guys want it. I'm going to put up with it. So, DMenu, DWM, ST, and I'm going to go ahead. I, I actually am not familiar with this program at all. Surf. Surf is a simple web browser based on WebKit 2 GTK+. Plus. Uh, so, it is the suckless web browser, and it's a graphical web browser. It's not a terminal-based web browser, so... I went ahead and I downloaded DWM, ST, Surf, and a D menu. And I went ahead and pulled it down from the site, you know, the download links for each of these programs. That way I have the source. That way I can go ahead and start hacking on them, editing them, patching them, recompiling them. So this is DWM on day one on my system. I've obviously edited things a little bit. Uh, and I applied, I think, one patch to DWM. I didn't patch DMenu, ST, or Surf at all. So this is really pretty bare bones stuff. So uh, let's start with simple terminal, the ST terminal. So I've already got mod, shift, enter, key binded for that. Let's uh, make this full screen here, the layout. So this is ST. Uh, I changed the color scheme. Now, if I CD into the ST directory where I downloaded the, the source for ST, and I uh, take a look at the config, so vim, and then I'm going to config.h is the name of the file. This is the config file for ST, and the only thing I really played with were the colors down here. So those are the color schemes, and I basically just pasted the color scheme I'd been using in my X resources file for X term and URXVT. I just pasted those same colors here. And then of course you need to write and quit, you know, out of Vim. And then you need to, because you have to recompile when you make changes, make, and then you need to sudo make, how about clean install? Sudo make clean install, of course, because it's sudo, type in a password. And now your new ST should take effect 
on the next launch of XT. So if you close it and launch it again, you know, whatever changes you made. So if I change the colors or the font or whatever, whatever they should take after that. Let me open up a terminal again. One thing I, sh I should have done is zoomed in on camera so you guys can see, you know, URXVT and Xterm both have the option of uh, the functionality anyway to zoom in and out. ST does have that functionality out of the box. You don't have to patch it for this. So control shift page up, I think. Control shift page up, control shift page down to zoom in and out. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this. By the way, all of this can be found in the man page. So man ST, if I page down, you'll see uh, control shift page up or page down decreases the font, page up increases the font. Q to quit out of the man page. So I'm going to CD into the DWM directory. I do a LS command here. You'll see there's some stuff already there. Uh, I've already downloaded a couple of patches. I was going to play with just patching the system. So let me open up a web browser. So normally I would open up Firefox, but again, I'm going to switch to Surf. This will be the first time I've really played with Surf. <laughs> so uh, how do I launch Surf? I probably need to use D-Menu, I know there's suckless utility, mod P launches D-Menu. Uh, and surf space about suckless.org. See if that works. And that does, that gets us to the suckless.org website. Let's put this on a different workspace. So mod shift 2 to send it to the second workspace and then just mod 2 to take us to the second workspace. And DWM, patches, I wonder if there's a way to zoom in on this. I'm sure there probably is, but I, I'd have to man page it. So I pulled up, pulled up the man page for surf. It looks like control shift K zooms in, control shift J zooms out. I quit out of the man page. All right, let's try that. Control shift K. Ah, I like it. <laughs> All right, anyway, the patches. So I pulled down just a couple of patches just to play with this. I knew I would eventually need some programs to auto start on launch. So I pulled up uh, this auto start uh, diff here. So dwm dash auto start whatever dot diff. Downloaded that and I put that in that dwm directory where I have the source code for dwm. And I think I installed or tried to install the gaps. Uh, uh, diff here so there's a DWM gaps diff uh, a gaps patch and then I tried to install those and how you go about doing this so back in our terminal and I'm in the DWM directory I need to patch space dash uh, p1 I found all this by the way at the suckless website and then the less than sign and then the path to the diff the patch we're adding and the first one I added was the DWM auto start one which is a pretty simple patch you can open the source code code and read it but basically it just uh, creates the the ability for you now to have a auto start file somewhere that's just a simple text file that you know any programs you want to auto start on launch for example Compton or Nitrogen to set your wallpaper or FEH if you use FEH or you know, whatever you want that needs to start on Auto start <laughs> so that's all this does I, I've already done this before I just wanted to show you the command to get the patch and that command worked just fine Now the other patch that I downloaded the gaps one. Uh, let's see This one does not work <laughs> Or it didn't, and I'm going to go ahead, but it, it, it gave me this hunk number one failed, hunk number two failed, two out of two hunks failed. So for some reason that patch did not work, and that was on a stock DWM. I hadn't really changed anything, so I'm not sure why that patch was failing. I do know that the more you patch these programs, like DWM and ST, but especially something as big as DWM, you start adding a lot of patches. You're going to have some of these patches fail the more you change that config file because they expect, the patches expect you to have a stock DWM. That's what they're built against. So the more you start patching this thing, the more likely some of the patches that you try in the future, they're just not going to build correctly. You're going to probably have to just manually patch these things, you know, open the uh, 
the source code yourself and add the lines that need to be uh, added. So again, kind of going to be a bit of a headache going forward with DWM. This is this is just what you have to live with by adopting this simple, minimal, this KISS philosophy, keep it simple, stupid. So that's just a few minutes on camera using DWM, ST, DMenu, and Surf, the suckless utilities. So what am I in store for the next few weeks, however long I end up playing with the suckless utilities? Well, again, the fact that you have to compile these things every time you config them, every time you add a patch, it's going to get old, especially on DWM itself. Now, ST, I imagine I'm going to ap apply a few patches, <clears throat> excuse me, a, f a few patches to it. You know, change the color scheme, which I've already set. I'm pretty much done with ST, so having to compile that thing every time I make a change, that's not going to be a big deal because I don't plan on changing the terminal very much. D menu, I probably make a few changes right away to D menu, but I probably you know, can go weeks or months at a time probably without making any real changes to D-Menu. It just works. Out of the box, D-Menu is just fine without any patches. So uh, the, the the one that's going to cause me some headaches is DWM because I'm going to be editing this config file constantly and then having to compile it every time I make a change. Also, out of the box, there's no real way to restart WM like in the session I have to log out and log back in. Now, there is a patch, I think, that can cor correct that. Uh, I haven't looked into it that much. But the fact that now, not only am I having to I edit something in the config file, now I have to rebuild it, right? So make and then make install. And then I, there's no way to restart DWM in session and still have all your X windows up. I have to log out and log back in <laughs> every time. So that's going to get old like immediately. So I really need to find the patch that would allow me to restart DWM in session. The other thing about DWM out of the box, there's only two layouts. Uh, let me show you guys this. So right now I'm in the standard tiling layout. So the standard tiling layout for DWM is it opens the first uh, program full screen. It's like Pretty much every tiling window manager would on just one window. And then the next one, it has a second column, but the second column, they're not split evenly. The main pane is on the left. It's slightly wider than the one on the right. The next window, if you open another window, splits that right-hand column. It just keeps splitting it. Kind of like Xmonad does, uh, very similar to the default Xmonad layout. I kind of like that layout. It's my favorite layout in Xmodad in Qtile, where one pane is the main pane. That's where you put your big program, maybe your web browser, and then everything else is split on the other pane. The only other layout is there is a floating layout here. And yes, I just used the mouse to switch to that because I'm not sure what the key binding <laughs> without reading the config file is to get to this layout, but this layout is a floating layout. So now all your windows open in a floating layout and you can, of course can drag them you can mod and then the left button on the mouse to drag them or mod right uh, on the mouse to change them i'm sure there's key bindings to do all this too people often ask me about the key bindings you know in these uh, i haven't even read the config file i'm not sure what the default key bindings are that's how brand new all of this is <laughs> so i just know how to open a terminal close a terminal uh, the only the only change to key bindings I changed by default the alt key was the mod key I changed it to the super key. Other than that, all the default key bindings are still here, and I'm gonna change them because some of the default key bindings are kind of strange. Like mod p to open up D menu mod p. That's that's kind of weird for me. <laughs> anyway, this is again day one. I'm looking forward to this. I hope you guys are interested in this little challenge, the suckless challenge. Before I go. This show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Dylan, Leo, Rob, and Tony. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of this show. Also brought to you by all the fine ladies and gentlemen. You see all those names on the screen. They are the supporters of this channel. Without each and every one of these guys, none of this would be possible. If you would like to support my work, please consider doing so. You can support me over on Patreon. Look for me, DistroTube, over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.